I will be just half the speaker and Dr. Bruce Allen because he's doctor. <laughs> he will come with you the full cost meal. I'll be just the appetizer. Amen. Now as I was pondering and waiting on the Lord what brief message to share with you this morning. The Lord gave me three words. Three parting words for you to take hold of as you will leave this conference to go back to your various homes. All during this conference, these past four days, you have been hearing wonderful messages from each and every man of God, even those who spoke in the morning briefly. There were still nuggets of great truth that God had imparted into your spirit. Even like the one single message that Pastor Johnny Taylor brought, it was very impactful. Amen? Amen. So, whether uh, a speaker is a known speaker or unknown speaker, whether they are young speaker or old speaker, it is God who speaks to them. Amen. I will never forget this um, incident that a dear man of God shared with me, which he witnessed firsthand. It was in the year 1986 when Dr. Billy Graham had organized a conference for evangelists in Amsterdam. So this minister of God from India, who is a very dear friend of mine, was invited to be a representative from India at this conference. So one morning, or uh, either a morning or afternoon session, an ordinary simple evangelist from Africa was to address the plenary session. So no big name speaker was assigned for that session. So they were all seated and this uh, evangelist friend of mine was seated on the second row behind the first row where speakers always sit. So as they were all waiting for the session to begin, just about a few minutes before the session began, Dr. Billy Graham entered into the auditorium and he came and he sat on the first row on the seat where he usually sits. The MC of the day began to shiver when he saw Billy Graham in the meeting. So he nervously looked through his schedule to see if Dr. Graham was assigned to speak that day. So when he double checked to see and was made sure that Dr. Graham was not scheduled to speak that day, and he was still surprised why did Dr. Graham show up. So he went and greeted Dr. Graham and sat behind him, beside him and very meekly asked Dr. Graham, say, sir, uh, I'm sorry, you are, you are not assigned to speak this afternoon. Did you come by mistake? And uh, the evangelist friend of mine was sitting right behind Dr. Graham, overheard the entire conversation. And this is what he overheard. Dr. Graham said, I have come to hear what God will speak to this man of God. So that shocked this evangelist friend. Because the speaker that day was an unknown, ordinary evangelist from Africa. So not only Dr. Graham sat in the meeting, but he also studiously took down notes of what this man of God was speaking. So th that incident impressed this man of God so greatly that he, he then learned the secret to the greatness of Dr. Billy Graham, his humility. See, you are not a respecter of person, whether high name speaker or no name speaker. God can speak through any vessel. Amen. Sometimes, even through heathen people, God can speak to you. Have you experienced that? He may be a Hindu person or a Muslim person or totally atheist. When you least expect, suddenly, they open their mouth and they speak to you. And deep down in your heart, you know that it was God who was speaking through them. 
right so we should not look down upon anyone nor overestimate anyone if god can speak through a donkey he can speak through any animal amen so today i am the donkey <laughs> now three words number 1 turn with me to the most familiar passage that we all know too well but at the same time we all overlook that scripture too much matthew chapter 6 verse 33 the lord jesus christ said here but seek ye first the kingdom of god and its righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you now if you look at that last portion of the scripture it says all these things and what are all these things the all these things refers to the things that are found in verses 25 to 31 food to eat and clothes to wear the daily necessities of our life so we are often at times overly concerned overly worried overly focus on the daily necessities of our lives food to eat clothes to wear between food to eat and clothes to wear hung all other necessities of our life like a job or a house or a car or anything so most of the times we are pursuing after this all other things and we forget the weightier matters of the law the most important thing that we should rather seek after is the kingdom of god not just the kingdom of god and also its righteousness things or works pertaining to the kingdom of god so if you do that right then the lord jesus promises all these things that pertains to your natural life god will provide without you having to open your mouth and ask for it look at verse 32 the lord jesus says for all for after all these things to the gentiles seek so the gentiles are the non believers people who do not know a good god who provides they do not know all that so the gentiles people who have no knowledge of god seek after all these things but you should not do that because the second part of the scripture says for your heavenly father knows that you have need of all these things your father in heaven knows that you need food to eat you need clothes to wear you need a house to stay you need a car to drive and you need a job to live by your father knows all this so when your father knows all this he also knows how to provide and when to provide Amen. see our problem is we are always verse 25 says anxious we are anxious and we rush after all these things as a result we lose focus on the kingdom of god when the lord jesus christ began his ministry in matthew chapter 4 verse 17 says he preached saying the kingdom of god is at hand now this was 2000 years ago say he came to bring the kingdom of god in our midst he is dying on the cross open the door for the kingdom of god to be in our midst so when he died on the cross he made all things possible for us and ephesians chapter 1 verse 3 says we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings 
in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus. So technically, all things pertaining to our everyday life have already been provided for. So all you have to do is not ask for it. Take it. You see, this brings us to point number two. The point number two is found in Hebrews chapter 5. Please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 5. In Hebrews chapter 5, the Apostle Paul, the author of the book of Hebrews, we don't, we don't want to fight over who wrote Hebrews. Let the theologians do that. But God has clearly revealed that it was the Apostle Paul who wrote the book of Hebrews. I did not receive that revelation. But it was Kenneth e. Hagin who had received that revelation. So when God has already revealed to one man of God, it's good for me to believe that revelation. Agrees everybody? One of the greatest, most blessed men of God that America had ever had is Dr. Kenneth E. Hagin. A very, very wonderful man of God who walked with God and who had the fear of God in his life all the days of his life. So, the Apostle Paul reveals here. Now look at verse chapter 5 and verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say. Of whom? Concerning who? That is concerning Melchizedek. And hard to be uttered. Now we cannot say much to you because you are dull of hearing. Why are you dull of hearing? No, I'm not saying to you. <laughs> Don't get offended. You are not dull, although we are dull. So who are dull? The, he was writing to the, his audience, the Hebrew people. Verse 12 says, For when, we, when for the time you ought to be teachers, you have need that one teach you again the first principles of the oracles of God and are become such as having need of milk and not of solid food. So who drink milk? Babies. Babies. So, the Apostle Paul could not teach deeper truths concerning the Melchizedek because the people are still babies. So what do babies do? They cry. Cry for attention. They just sit down in one place and they cry and they cry for attention. That's what babies do. But adults do quite differently. When they want something, instead of asking the daddy or mummy for this or for that, they just go right to the papa's pocket, put their hands into the pocket and take out whatever money they want. Do you have kids like that? Now what's the difference? See, my nephew, who, who works for me in India, he lives together with me. When he needs something, I just tell him, go, go, to, put your hand in my wallet and take out whatever you need. So he goes, because the uncle has already given the permission. So he goes and he takes whatever he wants. Of course, he tells me how much he has taken. And even if he doesn't tell me, it doesn't matter to me, because I always have very little money in my wallet. <laughs> You know why? Hey, don't laugh. They all get a high salary. I don't. <laughs> they have a good boss who pays them good salary. My boss takes care, good care of me too. But not in everyday sense of dollars and cents that I see. My boss makes sure that I'm always taken care of. In that respect, I have no lack. Amen? Let me give you one good example, very good example. 
whenever I visit the US, the most common American food that I eat all the time is hamburgers. <laughs> the great American food. One reason is, I always eat after the meetings, not before the meetings. And the meetings end about 9-ish or 10-ish at night. And most of the good restaurants are always close by then. And the only thing that's available is Big Mac, the Big M, or the Big W, Wendy's, or the in and out, you go in, you come out, or Jack in a Box. These are the stuffs, you know. So, that's what I always end up eating. When we leave the church, before we go to the hotel, we drive through. Drive through and get and grab a burger and a fries and a coke. These are the good old days. I don't I stop doing that. And we go. So this has become the staple diet. So there is one precious daughter who comes all the way from Virginia to all my meetings. She heard me saying all this and then she decided that she will cook nice Indian meal for me each time I come to the US. So she and her family, her husband and her children, always come to all my meetings and they bring big pots of food to last me for four days or five days of the conference. And she didn't tell this to me beforehand. If she had told me beforehand, I would have always rejected them. Because I'm of the opinion, I should not trouble anybody. But she does it on her own and brings the food and always surprises me with nice, good, traditional Indian food, which only heaven can produce. <laughs> so look at that. This is one simple example. When you seek after the kingdom of God and after his righteousness, all these things, all these earthly things, they will come after you. Amen. Our good father knows this poor boy is eating McDonald's every day. <laughs> Very bad, unhealthy food. Let me do something for him. So he moved his precious child to cook food and bring it. See how good God is. Amen. Amen. So, we must learn to do one thing. Now look at verse, chapter 6, verse 1. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ. Now what are the first principles of the doctrine of Christ? They are the foundation of repentance from dead works, faith toward God, doctrine of baptisms, laying on of hands, the resurrection of the dead and eternal judgment. These are the first principles, basic doctrine of Christ. The Apostle Paul says in verse 1, let's leave them aside. That does not mean we discard. What he is saying is, those are for babies. When you are a baby Christian, you learn all this. But don't get hung up on them all the time and he says go on to perfection go the next step climb up higher go on to perfection Amen. that is counsel number two from the Lord for you now if you look at verse 4 it says there for it is impossible for those who were once enlightened and have tasted the heavenly gift and were made partakers of the Holy Spirit and tasted the good word of God and powers of the age to come. This is going on towards perfection. From one stage you go to the next stage where you learn about what it means to be enlightened. See, this is what the new ages are seeking after. But you have the word right here in the Holy Bible. So this is not new age teaching. Right? It's right here in the scriptures. To be enlightened has several meanings. One is the enlightenment of your mind 
where the kingdom of God comes to rule in your mind. The kingdom of God is light. So when that light comes into you, you are enlightened. Number two, the kingdom of God comes to abide within you. When the kingdom of God comes, now again the kingdom of God is light. Your spirit is enlightened. And when you attain that, you can have the same transfiguration experience just like the Lord Jesus experienced on the Mount of Transfiguration. It is absolutely possible for you to have this exact same transfiguration experience like the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what the Paul, Apostle Paul writes here, be enlightened. Secondly, taste the heavenly gift. There are so many gifts in heaven. You need to taste them. How can you taste them? What is a heavenly gift? We read in Revelation chapter 22 that the tree of life bears forth, brings forth 12 different kinds of fruits. So you need to taste them. What they are. What it is. In the year 1994, the Lord called me to fast for three days. And on the last day, the third day of the fast happened to be on a Sunday. So I was fasting the whole day. As I began my fast, that particular morning I felt a strong compulsion to just worship the Lord rather than first meditating the word or waiting on God, which I do more than any other thing. So as I began to worship the Lord, I was just lost in worship. After about an hour of worshipping, I felt in my spirit there was someone present in my small bedroom. When I opened my eyes, I saw an angel of God standing before me with a silver plate in his hand. When I looked at the plate, there were four different kinds of fruits. They were all cut in different shapes. And I asked the angel, what are these? So he said, these are fruits from the tree of wisdom. God has sent these fruits for you to eat. So I looked at the angel and a big doubt came in my heart. We have only heard of the tree of life. But I've never ever heard the tree of wisdom. Never heard it mentioned in the Bible. So I thought, this must be an angel of light from the devil who had masqueraded like a true angel and brought some fruit. So I remembered what Satan, the serpent did to Eve. You don't want to eat the wrong fruit. Then if you eat the wrong fruit, you get wrong wisdom. Wisdom from the devil. So I took one step backwards and I prayed, Spirit of the living God, is this angel truly from you? And the Holy Spirit, yes, I have sent him, take and eat. But I said, but where is it written in the Bible concerning fruits from, fruits from the tree of wisdom? Then the Holy Spirit very, very kindly said to me, have you not read what James chapter 1 says, the wisdom that comes from above is peaceable. So there is a wisdom that comes from above and that wisdom is manifested as a fruit from the tree of wisdom. So take and eat. So I took those fruits. One of them looked like a papaya. You know what's a papaya? Okay. Like a papaya cut in a small piece, like a triangle. And there was another fruit that looks like black currant. And there were four pieces. And there was two other fruits, I forgot what, what they are today. And when I ate them, though they were spiritual, they really tasted like real fruit with all the juice and the sweetness. And after I ate, this angel just disintegrated like a have you seen Star Trek movies? You know when they say, beam me up Scotty? How the person disintegrates into particles? That's exactly how this angel disintegrated. 
I have never, that was the first time I saw the angel transform like particles and they just come to a center point and then vanish. So after he disappeared, the Lord Jesus Christ came. He came and he sat on my bed and he said, I have come, or first he said, since now that you have eaten fruit from the tree of wisdom, you will now understand what I'm going to teach you. I'm going to teach you secrets of the universe. And then there was a book on my bed. See, I have a great fascination for astronomy. So I, for the past one week, I was reading a book called A Brief History of Time, written by Stephen Hawking. And there were many things quite hard to understand. But because of my interest in astronomy, I was just reading it as a pastime. The Lord took the book and he said, let's go through this page by page. And I will now teach you the true secrets of the universe. So we went through from page 1 to page 330, the entire book. And the Lord explained where the scientists were right and where they were wrong. And the many things that puzzle science. He explained to me in so simple terms how the scientists, because of their knowledge, it has veiled them from knowing the truth. See, that wisdom or ability to comprehend was made possible because of the spiritual gift, the heavenly gift that I received from the Lord. You taste and see how good God is. So that's what the second part means. Now look at the third part. Partakers of the Holy Spirit. Partakers of the Holy Spirit is not just the baptism of the Holy Spirit. It goes beyond that. Now, you see, we all stop at the baptism of the Holy Spirit. But there is also a baptism of fire. And there is also a fellowship with the Holy Spirit. See, we miss all that. And we just settle down with the first basic principles for babies Christians. The baptism of the Holy Spirit. We should go one step beyond the baptism of fire. And fellowshipping with the Holy Spirit. Communing with the Holy Spirit. You can commune with the Holy Spirit. You can commune with the Lord Jesus. And you can commune with the Father. Three separately. It's possible to fellowship with them separately as individuals. If you read 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, it says, Our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So you can fellowship with the Father, you can fellowship with the Son, the Lord Jesus, and fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Absolutely possible. And the three can relate to us in three different levels. The level of the Holy Spirit, the level of the Lord Jesus, and the level of the Father God. Absolutely possible. That's what it means here, partakers of the Holy Spirit. And verse 5, tasted the good word of God. Now this is not just merely reading the word, but digging deep into the word. You taste the richness of the word of God. When you begin to meditate deeper, each word becomes a meat. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 6, The bread that you eat is my flesh. And he who eats my flesh will never die. Have you read that? Yes, sir. That word there, never die, he did not refer to spiritual death. He referred to physical death. Yes. So which means, if you keep on eating the flesh of the Lord Jesus, the word of God, you will never die. Because the Lord Jesus said, my word is spirit and life. If the word of God is spirit and life, the scripture says, the spirit quickens you. If it quickens you, means every time you meditate the word of God, the spirit of God will quicken your body cells. When they quicken your body cells, it means your body cells are renewed. 
like the eagles so your cells are forever young that you have not all protected her so the angel had no answers to give so the lord looked at her and said all right you go back i extend your life you shall live for another 40 years so the woman made a mental count so i am now 55 plus 40 95 oh praise the lord so she was so thankful to the lord she bowed down she worshiped the lord and she rose up from the dead and when she rose up from the dead she was so happy that god has blessed her with another 40 years so when she came out of the hospital as she was about to go home she thought to herself since i have 40 more long years to live let me do one thing let me go and beautify myself and change my years so that i will look young and beautiful like an 18 year old something so she found the best cosmetic surgeon in the city and she made an appointment and she went and consulted and she went under the knife now before that the lord promised her that she will live for 40 more years and she also made the lord promise her that her his angels will constantly protect her all the days of her life till she finishes her life so the lord promised her He said i will not just give you one angel i will give you two angels so two angels to stand on her right hand on her left hand to protect her all the time so wherever she went those two angels followed her so she went into this hospital and she went under the knife and after several hours she came out of the uh, the what huh yeah anesthesia and she looked at herself in the mirror she couldn't believe what she was seeing all the black eye has gone all the sagging muscles gone everything gone and she looked like an 18 year old princess diana she was so happy with what she looked like and she paid the surgeon for all his fees and she grabbed her bag hand bag and she before she went she had already bought nice new clothes that will fit into her nice slim body so she put on her nice charming looking electrifying attention grabbing clothes and she stepped out of the hospital and she looked at the bright sun that came and kiss on her she was so happy so joyful she stepped out on the road and out of nowhere a truck came and hit her and she died on the spot instantly she died so and she opened her eyes she stood before the lord jesus she was so mad she ran up to the throne of god to jump on him and shout at him and she was so mad so if the two angels who were protecting by the left and the right of the lord had not put their sword to stop her she would have pounced on the lord jesus like a bear so and the lord asked her my dear daughter what's your problem so she went on pouring out her woes to the lord say lord you promised me 40 years how is it that i died so the lord jesus himself was so surprised 
how this woman died when she should live for another 40 years so he summoned the two angels who were assigned to look after her so he asked the angels how is it that you did not protect her so the angels very meekly told the lord lord jesus according to your word we followed this woman everywhere she went and we followed her right up to the time that she entered into the cosmetic surgeons hospital so we stood outside the hospital waiting for her and we waited and we waited and we waited we never saw her coming out at all <laughs> Then suddenly we saw a woman being kicked by a truck. We didn't know who she was. <laughs> so, next time you go for Botox, <laughs> remember this story. <laughs> so this is not that. So you don't want to taste the good word of God for those kind of purposes. You know when you really eat the word of God, I tell you a truth, you can live forever because the word of God is true. Some 30 years ago, I heard this testimony of a Catholic nun in South India how she has been leaving at that time this was in the 80s when i heard about the story at that time for the 30 or 10 or 15 years she has not she has not eaten a single morsel of bread i was surprised so what did what should I, what does she do i asked one day she read the scriptures matthew chapter 4 verse 4 man shall live Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So she read the scripture over and over again until it hit her and she came to the realization that I don't have to live by mortal bread. So when, when that realization hit her, she decided that for lunch she is going to meditate the word of God. So when the lunch time came, she had a cup of coffee she sat down and she meditated the word of god for one hour during her lunch time then when dinner time came she did the same thing the following day she did the same thing and it went on till today more than 30 years her, her meal is just a cup of coffee and the bible so i thought now for the woman to go by that kind of a diet she must be as thin as a pencil but i was told by the bishop who related the story to me she is a heavy set woman and she gained weight just eating the word of god so that proves what the lord jesus said he who eats my flesh shall not die so it is absolutely possible to live in that realm that is the kingdom realm when you live in the kingdom realm how can you die there's no death in god's kingdom am i right everybody because god is life so when you partake life how can you die you cannot die so that's what that scripture says tasting the good word of god and finally and the powers of the age to come see the powers of the age to come is is mentioned only in the scripture in the entire bible so that is for the matured sons of god so when you attain this level it brings you to point number three revelation chapter 4 verse 1 when you reach that stage then Verse 1 says, After this I looked, and behold, a door was opened in heaven, and the first voice that I heard was, as it were, of a trumpet talking to me, which said, Come up here, and I will show thee things which must be hereafter. 
Now you see two things in this scripture. Number one, a door was opened. So it's a past tense. I see a door open. The apostle John did not say like that. It's not a present tense. Said a door was opened. And then um, secondly, he heard a voice say, come up. Now when you reach that stage, every time you pray, or every time you are even meditating, thinking upon the Lord, you will see a door open before you in heaven. And you will hear a voice say, come up. So every day can be a heavenly experience for you. You don't have to be on this earth. Each time you pray or each time you even want to talk with the Lord, you are always there before His presence. Looking at Him directly, talking to Him face to face. Fellowshipping with the saints of God in heaven. Fellowshipping with the angels in heaven. Fellowshipping with all things in heaven. The Lord God is calling you to this life. And this life is possible if you do the first principles. What is the first principle? Seek ye first the kingdom of God and its righteousness. This is the first principle. See, when you do, when you do that, you don't have to worry about, please pray for me for this, please pray for me for that. I'm sure a lot of people would want the speakers to pray for you. But if you come up and ask the speakers to pray for you, then you are behaving exactly like a baby Christian. Are you baby Christian? I will see whether you are baby or not after this service. <laughs> if you ever come up to us for prayer, then I, we know who you are. Then you need a nipple in your mouth. That you should not be there. See, those are past. You should not be a baby all the time. You should progress to be an adult. Only then, the Lord Jesus Christ can feed you with strong meat. Early this year, I was invited to the nation of Taiwan for meetings. So it was supposed to be a prophetic conference. And when I prayed, the Lord gave me words or messages for the nation. So all the three days, there were three different sets of messages pertaining to the nation, which from a normal point of view to a matured believer may look like very rudimentary, basic, simple messages. In fact, some uh, of uh, matured Christians who regularly come to our conferences later on commented to me, you know, we expected some real, solid, deep teachings from you, but they were so simple. So I told, I told them, God looks at the audience. If the audience are just babies, how can you feed strong meat to a baby? So when the Lord looks at the audience and they are all babies, He gives them milk. Okay, this is what the babies need. Milk. In fact, some of my staffs in India, they have commented to me, they said, how is it that whenever you minister at the conference in Lancaster, California, you really teach, teach very deeply and with marvelous revelations from the kingdom of God, but when you preach in conferences in India or elsewhere, you are just giving very simple messages. And the answer is very simple. The people who come to that conference are really deep seekers of God. So to those who deeply seek after God, then the Lord takes the riches out of his treasure, real solid strong meat, and he feeds them. Amen. So it all depends on our level, how we are. You can choose to be a baby or you can choose to grow up. But it is the desire of God that you grow up. You should grow up. You should not remain as a baby only at the rudimentary, basic principles level. The end is coming very, very soon. 
Now please listen very carefully. If you don't grow your faith, when the time of testing comes, you will fail. You will fall. Your faith will not be strong enough to stand against the wiles of the devil that will come against us. The testings that is going to come upon the whole world, you will not be able to stand the test. And when the test of the mark of the beast comes, how are you going to stand, withstand from taking that mark? Your faith will not be strong. When your faith is not strong, you will not be able to strengthen the faith of your children. So their faith is also very small. The faith of your family is baby. And when the test comes, all the, your entire family will be the first person to take the mark of the beast. Because you will not be able to stand strong. Let me close by saying this true incident that took place in Syria a few years ago. A family of four, father, mother, two children, Christians, godly Christians, very prayerful seekers after God. One day, the mother was praying and she heard the clear voice of the Lord tell her, my dear daughter, will you put, offer yourself on the altar of sacrifice for me. And she clearly understood what the Lord meant. It meant martyrdom. You know, there's a lot of religious threat in Syria and in the Middle East. So she did not hesitate to say, yes, Lord, I offer myself on the altar for you. So a couple of days passed by, and as she was praying one morning, she heard the Lord voice say, my dear daughter, Will you offer your husband on the altar of sacrifice? So she hesitated. Because how can she speak for her husband without him wanting to offer himself? So she got up from prayer. She met her husband. She told him what the Lord said. And without hesitation, the husband said, Honey, let's kneel down and pray. So they knelt down, they held hands and Husband and wife offered themselves on the altar of sacrifice. Okay. A few days later, the Lord spoke. They have two young cherubic looking children. You look at them, they have such a look on their faces that you want to lick them. You know, some children are such, they have such a cherubic look on their face. You just want to hug them and carry them with you all the time. Like that boy is one of them. Malachi, you see Malachi? Malak, Malak. Each time I look at you, he's such a cherubic, angelic look on his face. You want to pack him and bring him home. Can I? Can I do that? Can I bring you home? See, he has got such a smile. He said, you can try if you want. That's, that's what the smile is saying to me. So, that lady had two such children, small girls, eight and six and the Lord told her my dear daughter will you offer your two children on the altar of sacrifice she shot up from her knees shocked at what the Lord said and for several days she just could not decide what to do then after three or four, four days one day in prayer she brought her two children and make them sit on her laps and she spoke to her and she said you know one of these days bad men will come into our house they will kick the door open and they will have hoods around their face and they will have a sword in their hand and they will kill mommy they will kill daddy when that happens you must never deny your faith you close your eyes tight open your eyes and see whatever screams or shouts you may hear just close your eyes tight and hold your little sister's hand tight and then a little later you will feel something sharp on your neck when you feel that open your eyes and look at the man who has put a knife on your neck and tell the man 
I forgive you for killing my parents and Jesus loves you. So the mother looked at the two girls and said, Do you all understand what mommy is saying? And the two girls perfectly understood what the mother said. And the four of them knelt down. They all held hands together. And they prayed and offered themselves on the altar of sacrifice. A week later, one morning, their door was kicked open. And in entered four ISIS terrorists. And they shouted at the top of the voice at the father saying, Will you renounce Christ? When he said no, the sword swung and his head rolled on the ground. And the girls remembered what the mother said. They quickly ran into the bedroom and the older girl held the younger sister's hand very tightly and told her, close your eyes, don't look. Then sure enough, they heard another fall of a body, the mother's body. And in a little while, the older girl felt a sharp sword, something sharp on her neck. And she remembered what her mother said. She opened her eyes, looked straight into the eyes of the ISIS terrorists and she said, I forgive you for killing my parents and Jesus loves you. <laughs> The little girl's neck was cut, so was her sister's neck. The entire family died as a martyr. How is this possible? Because the mother's faith was strong, the father's faith was strong, and they strengthened the faith of their two little daughters. The whole family's faith was strong. How is our faith? How is your faith? How is your children's faith? You can only strengthen your children's faith if you yourself are strong. If your faith is not strong, how can you strengthen your own children's faith? Even if you don't get the call to die as a martyr, there is another test that's coming for the whole world, the mark of the beast, which is worse than Martyrdom, you know, because martyrdom takes place in an instant. You are skilled, you are gone. But, mark of the beast, you are going to take it for life. You have to run as a fugitive from the government of the Antichrist. And if you run away, and you are hiding here and hiding there, you have no food to eat, no water to drink, what will you do? How can you bear the cries of your baby crying for milk or crying for food? Can you hear their screams until they die? See, one baby is screaming and crying now. For whatever reason the baby is crying, I don't know whether it's crying because I'm preaching too long. <laughs> or for milk or whatever reason, I don't know. But there are many mothers and fathers here. You know the cries of your baby when they want food or they want milk. You know that very well. You can distinguish the sound of the cries. Right? Am I right, everybody? So can you bear the cries of your baby from hunger? Can you tell your baby, don't worry, child, even if you die crying Jesus you will be in Jesus presence don't worry no matter what happens mommy will not take the mark of the beast mommy will not buy food for you can you say that see this is a test that is coming very very soon this generation will not pass by without seeing the mark of the beast do you know that already in the US they have already implemented the chip being implanted in your hands? It's already started. It's not nationally implemented yet. But in many states they have already started this. It's, it's on a voluntary program now. It's just a matter of time before they make it compulsory. And this is something that will be implemented all over the world not just in the US. So what are we going to do? 
that's why the the word of the lord to you this morning is don't remain as babies go up one step higher as adults amen, amen. thank you everybody thank you for watching this video please make sure to subscribe to our channel to update the latest video from Sadhu Sandas Varish. Stay tuned for the next sermons on my channel every day. Amen. Praise my Lord. Hallelujah.
phải không em chuyện tình yêu đâu biết được ngày mai rồi hôm nay em bên ai nhìn em khóc trên vai thôi hãy quên đi về với em hiện tại anh còn nhớ về ngày ta còn đắm say anh vẫn nhớ về người bên anh khi ấy em đã quên rồi câu hứa yêu trọn đời em bỏ anh rồi em vui tình nhân mãi cuộc tình này đã khác rồi mình kết thúc em ơi chuyện tình này đã chết rồi còn thích chi em ơi một lần em gian dối rồi còn có yêu không vui một lần em đã phản bội làm vết thương chưa thì anh vẫn sẽ nếm cười người khác làm em vui còn anh xin kết thúc và giữ chút đau thương thôi ở nơi xa luôn nhớ về một mối duyên tình phai đường em đi nay khác rồi còn mỗi anh đơn côi đường em đi nay đã khác rồi còn riêng anh mãi đơn đơn anh còn nhớ về ngày ta còn đắm say anh vẫn nhớ về người bên anh khi ấy em đã quên rồi câu hứa yêu trọn đời em bỏ anh rồi em vui tình nhân mới cuộc tình này đã khác rồi mình kết thúc em ơi chuyện tình này đã chết rồi còn làm vết thương chưa nguôi thì anh vẫn sẽ mỉm cười người khác làm em vui còn anh xin kết thúc và giữ chút đau thương thôi ở nơi xa luôn nhớ về một mối duyên tình phai đừng em đi nơi khác rồi còn mỗi anh đơn côi ở nơi xa luôn nhớ về một mối duyên Hãy subscribe